In this pool lesson, I will explain you all the important aspects of the pocket hanger and how you shouldn't play this kind of ball. Firstly, you need to understand what a pocket hanger is and what aspects to consider in order to play this type of ball correctly. In the second part of this video, I will show you a few classic situations on the table to help you understand how to position the cue ball from a pocket hanger for the next ball, considering different positions of the cue ball on the table. And in the last step, I will show you a highly beneficial exercise that you can incorporate into your practice routine to improve your ability to play the pocket hanger correctly and position yourself for the next shot. So let's start! Many times beginner or advanced pool players find themselves in a situation where the object ball is positioned extremely close to the corner pocket. And in such cases, they need to position themselves for the next ball, which is located on the opposite side of the table. This particular ball is commonly referred to as the pocket hanger and many beginner pool players struggle with effectively playing this shot. They think that this is really simple shot and they don't need to use any specific spin and speed on the cue ball, which are two really important factors to create position for the next ball correctly. Let's imagine a situation where we have the cue ball placed in the center area of the table and the object ball is positioned extremely close to one of the bottom corner pockets. Our objective is to set up a position for the next ball, which is located on the other side of the table in the center area of the top short rail. And many beginner pool players believe that they need to play this shot with almost full contact and using a lot of speed and applying top spin to bring the cue ball to the other side of the table. However, this approach is the biggest mistake they can make in this situation. If we play this shot with almost full contact and apply top spin and high speed, then the cue ball will spin forward but in the opposite direction of its movement after bouncing off the rail. This spin causes the cue ball to slow down significantly and lose a considerable amount of momentum upon bouncing off the rail. It may even change direction again under the influence of this spin. And the best way to play this shot correctly is to use a cut shot, employing different kinds of spins on the cue ball. However, it is important to avoid using topspin when hitting the cue ball. This requires making a very thin contact with the ball. But of course, we have many options to play this ball correctly and position ourselves for the next ball in different ways. In today's episode, I want to show you three different situations where the position of the cue ball will be crucial. I will explain you in details how you should play to achieve the best possible position for the next ball. If we have the cue ball positioned at the center point of the table, the best approach is to play using center ball with a very thin contact and make a position for the next ball using two rails. This is a really natural shot because we don't need to use a lot of speed and the cue ball going really natural towards the next ball. The alternative way to make a thin cut is to position the cue ball to the right side of the table, and this time we need to use a combination of low left spin and low speed to bring the cue ball in correct place. The next option is to make a shot using the long rail before making contact with the object ball. By applying side spin and using medium speed, we can navigate the cue ball by three or four rails to reach a safe position for the next ball. In the following variation, we can play using two or three rails. 
However, this time we need to hit the object ball first and apply a low left spin. Additionally, we need to use a more speed on the cue ball compared to our previous shot. And there is another way to achieve position, but this is the worst option and requires a high level of skill and a perfect stroke. It involves applying a significant amount of backspin and attempting to position the cue ball for the next ball without making contact with any rail. I don't recommend this kind of shot and use it only when necessary. For example, if the object ball is a bit away from the pocket, then we can't play a cat shot or use a top spin. Then it becomes necessary to play a large amount of backspin. In the next part of this video, we need to consider the situation when the cue ball is near the bottom short rail. This time we have a much easier situation and the best choice would be to play the object ball with a half contact using right spin and low speed. Using this option we can position the cue ball for the next ball on the right side of the table. Of course we can also play to the other side of the table, but this time we need to aim the object ball a bit fuller and apply low right spin with a bit more speed to ensure that the cue ball stays on the left side of the table. And sometimes we might be forced to play unconventional shot where we can aim for the same spot on the table, but this time we will use a Z shot to send the cue ball around 3 rails toward ball number 8. As a final example, I would like to demonstrate a situation where the cue ball is positioned very close to the top left corner pocket and far away from the object ball which is pocket hanger. In this situation, we still can't use topspin on the cue ball because it lost all its speed after contacting the bottom short rail. The best approach would be to play the object ball with a thin contact using center ball and low speed on the cue ball. In this case, we can bring the cue ball towards the next ball using only one rail. This is a very natural shot, but we need to be careful to not make a foul in the top right corner pocket. There is another option to position the cue ball for ball number 9 on the left side of the table. However, this time we need to execute a cut shot and apply low left spin to go with the cue ball towards the market area using free rails. I can see one more option to create a position for the 9 ball but it is quite challenging to execute. The idea is to use the rail first and make the ball number 3 and travel to the desired location by using 3 rails. In this situation, the cue ball is positioned near the long rail, which makes it difficult to find the correct point of contact with the object ball. It is crucial to hit the object ball with a thin enough contact because if we hit it too thick, then the cue ball will lose all its power and we won't be able to bring it to the other side of the table. As you can see, the pocket hanger requires a bit of concentration to choose the best possible spin and speed on the cue ball. And now let's look at this graphic to understand how to prepare the best position for the pocket hanger. We have 3 remaining balls on the table with ball number 7 positioned near the corner pocket. Ball number 9 is on the other side of the table and we need to put ball number 6 into the side pocket. We have a slight angle and if we review to the previous shots, you can see that we had the best possibility when the cue ball was close to the rails. These positions provide the best opportunity for an easy position on ball number 9, since we don't need to apply any difficult spin or speed on the cue ball. While a stop shot and leaving the cue ball in the center area of the table 
is still acceptable. In my opinion, it doesn't offer as many opportunities as the two previous examples. Therefore, we can conclude that it is always beneficial to leave the cubo close to the rails, because this approach will give us the best results. In summary, when playing pocket hanger, remember to not make full contact with the ball. Secondly, avoid using a lot of power when applying topspin to the cubo. Instead, try to make thin contact and maintain a medium speed to prevent unexpected outcomes. And finally, always aim to position the cue ball close to the rails before playing the pocket hanger, as this will increase your chances of obtaining an easier position for the next shot. And at the end of this episode, I want to show you an exercise that will help you understand how to play pocket hangers and what kind of spin and speed to use on the cue ball. As you can see, we have six balls on the table and each ball is placed extremely close to the pocket around the table. We have cue ball in hand, but we need to place this ball in market area on the table. Our goal will be to pot all the balls without making any mistakes, but we need to be careful about the position of the cue ball, because after each pot we need to place the cue ball in the target zone, which is a two diamonds wide square in the center area of the table. This exercise is a perfect way to learn the specific speed and spin to use on the cue ball to bring it into the target zone. Each shot is really easy and we can't make any mistakes, however it is crucial to find the best possible path for the cue ball after each pot, because if we don't reach the target zone after each shot, we will need to go back at the beginning and start this exercise again. Only by following this strategy we can learn to be maximum focused and make precise position on the center area of the table. Ok guys, that's all for today and I hope that you learned a lot from this tutorial about the pocket hanger. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more billiards videos. Thanks for watching guys and as always, see you in next lesson. Take care.